You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O oh Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. And the song is, is sort of around that.
give me breath, mighty to save. You turn my heartbreak into dancing. I'll stand with you, I won't be moved. To the end, I'll sing of you. All glory and praise, I won't be silent. He will save you, mighty God. He will save you, mighty God. He will save you, God.
I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you with all of my mind. And I will worship you with all of my strength. For you are my God. him hallelujah walking in the fullness of the lord can you say amen hallelujah we want more of him in our lives praise god greet someone and tell them thank god jesus is lord hallelujah then you may be seated hallelujah thank you brother dick we're glad to have you back this week hallelujah praise the lord and uh he he got the victory amen Hallelujah. Nathan had his tooth pulled last Saturday and had to go in for oral surgery on Friday because they broke the root off. And so he's home on drugs. <laughs> Pretty strong drugs. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're really glad to have Dick back. Hallelujah. And uh, he won the battle of over flu. Amen. Praise God. We're so glad to see you this morning. Remember Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, Praise God. Uh, real quick announcement, uh, well, a, a request. And I know we're getting started later, you know, like 11, 11, 10. Um, we really would like to get started earlier, but it would need more help. Getting everything set up, um, uh, teams are set up so that uh, the musicians could just go ahead and start. We don't have a place to practice, so they kind of have to practice on Sunday morning. And we can't get in, but so early, okay? And so... If you can get here earlier and help us get everything set up so they can get started earlier, that would be good. Well, what can I do? Well, there's little, there's little things, putting chairs out, dropping cables. There's all kinds of little stuff. The more that they don't have to do, the quicker we can get to the other stuff. Okay? And, um, you know, and those who've been coming all the time, all the time, we thank you. All right? We're just asking some more of you just to kind of. Especially since we don't have a Sunday night service, you know, so it's, it's like, you know, uh, you don't have to get up, come back Sunday night, which uh, that won't always be that way. Because when we get, a, get our own building again, we're probably going to reinstitute a Sunday night service, but then we won't have to set up. It'll all be set up all the time. You know, the, the, the musicians could come as early as they want to and start. 
You know, they could come on another night and start and practice. So it's, there's a lot of things we got to really start looking towards, you know, this has been great. This really has been great. And we're just going to keep doing this until we find something different. But it would be nice to have our own place again that's permanently set up. All the things that we can do that we can't do right now effectively, easily, easily or effectively. I mean, we can, you know, we could just announce on a Sunday, hey, we're having a fellowship this Wednesday night. Everybody brings food and let's cook. And we got to plan that a little bit more whatever now. Uh, there's a lot of things we just have a lot more planning to do and a lot more coordinating to do. Let's have a special guest speaker come in the three nights. Well, we got to find out if the rooms are available and then pay for the rooms and rent the rooms and all that extra stuff. So that's, there's a lot more than, to doing and making things work than when you have your own place and you just go do what we want to do when we want to do it, however we want to do it. All right? So let's get, in, let's get together. Amen. Have some vision about that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Looking that way. Uh, listen, I don't think we could have found a better interim home than what we have. Okay, this has been great. All right? Um, and this has been, this has been awesome to be able to be here. And we will continue using this until. But we, need, we really need to start having vision out there about something different. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right. I don't think going back to the business part is an idea. No. No. It's, although it's still available. It's sitting there empty. Yeah. They had a church come in for five months after us. They, didn't, they, they never paid a, a penny and changed the back wall. They put stone on the back wall, and then they left. Actually, they were asked to leave. Anyway, it's just sitting there empty. So anyway, but we're good. All right? Hallelujah. All right. Time for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. Brother Benny's out there in the aisle right now. Brother Joe's over here waiting to get you. Don't forget, we're going to have communion into this service. We would, we would have done it last week, but um, uh, we didn't have everything here because the people who had it weren't here. Um, Dick and Nelly had everything for the communion, and they, they obviously didn't make it because of him winning the battle. Okay? So we said we'll just do communion this week. So at the end of the service, we'll receive the Lord's table. Praise the Lord. All righty. Need offering if you're sending by Square or Square Cash, go ahead and or, or PayPal, go ahead and ring that bad baby up. And uh, I got, an, and this has nothing to do with our church, but I got an announcement. If you, um, some of you don't know, but back in the 70s, and uh, they used to have a, a, a Kenneth Hagen reference Bible. It had the face shield on the bottom, not, not the Rhema logo, but the face shield and so forth. And then they did it, they stopped, they discontinued that and came up with the Rhema study Bible. And it was a big, I mean, it's a, it's a big Bible. That Raymond Study Bible was a big Bible. Uh, it was real thick and so forth. And, um, but they've just announced they're reintroducing the Kenneth E. Hagen Legacy Bible. And it's, it's basically that Bible with the little face shield on it and, and so forth. I'm excited because I wore mine out years ago and couldn't get it replaced. And it's, it, was my, it was my favorite preaching Bible. So uh, I'm excited. They start taking pre-orders tomorrow at Rama. So if you, you're interested... You know, a little price is like 130 bucks, but I'm just, you know, telling you ahead of time. You, you, if you like, I, I just love mine. It was a great. Did you have one, Bill? You had the Copeland. That you had the Raymond Study Bible. Yeah, it's it, that Study Bible was a time and a half easily bigger, thick wise, and uh, so we are. I'm I'm just like thrilled because I've missed that. You know, when you wear them out, you really can't use them. Pages fall out and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of it's kind of hard to preach with that. You open it up, and here goes your Bible. You know, that's that's kind of hard to preach with. So um, it's been archived, and um, but I, I I loved that Bible. So I'm excited. But let y'all know about it. Praise the Lord if you want want a good. It's got 26 lessons on faith in there. There's faith lessons in there, in in there. So you can study. It's a, it's a but it's the old. Anyway, praise the Lord. Just thought I'd throw that out there. You know, Jesus said, give it and it shall be given unto you. How's it, going to, how's it going to be given unto you? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will give it to your bosom. Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. Go ahead, Usher. Let's say, in the name of Jesus, we speak faith over the tithe, over the offering. People are blessed. There's money coming into their households. We walk in the land, the full supply overflow, and more than enough in the name of Jesus because we advance the kingdom throughout all the earth. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. In the name of Jesus, those on, on Facebook, you can give through electronically, through um, the um, Square Cash or through PayPal. Uh, I believe our PayPal account is uh, donations at fbc.org if you want to look us up. Hallelujah. Is that correct? Okay. And then uh, Square Cash is 
uh, Faith Victory Church without the and. There's no and. It says Faith Victory Church for square cash. You can locate us that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Children's Church, preschool, you guys are out of here. Miss Janie's going to have fun over there with you guys this morning. Glory to God. I believe that, we, you know, we, um, as they're marching out, I remember I'm in the Lord's army. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Um, you know, we, you know, this is what, the third weekend of the month, uh, or really the second weekend of the month, um, because the first was on a Monday. Okay. So we're really, you know, last Sunday was our first Sunday service. This is our second. Um, but as we've come into, you know, we, everybody kind of gets into the new year thing. And, uh, you know, they make all these New Year's resolutions. How many of you already lost yours? Don't raise your hand. Yeah, I'm cutting out sugar and I'm, you know, I'm the day I, blah, 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 and they go on and on and on and on. Amen? I'm going to lose 75 pounds in, in January alone. <laughs> That's probably not a good idea. It can be done. Brother Bill's a testament. It can be done. Shouldn't be done. Wasn't a good idea to do it that way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, you, you don't want to go, you know, from way up here to 150 or whatever and, and then have the guy stand outside your room with uh, the coffin nails, you know, and, and have it get, digging the, the grave out there at the cemetery and uh, telling you you got days and, and not weeks or months. And uh, huh? he seemed pretty excited about putting you in the ground. Well, I don't know what to say about some of these doctors these days. Uh, I went and saw my infectious disease guy the other day, um, the one that, one that was going to cut my toe off, you know, because I'm, I'm having to follow up with him because he's the one that got me on all the antibiotics and stuff. And, of course, um, uh, the, for, at the hospital, uh, we're probably going to have to remove this. Don't, eat, don't let him, and tell, the nurses, don't let him eat and drink after midnight because we're probably going to take him into surgery in the morning. It's going to have, it's, it's, it's going to, have to go. And... Um, he said, well, we'll wait and let the podiatrist look at it before we make the decision. The podiatrist came and said, hey, I don't think we have to do that right away. And um, we'll give the other stuff a shot. And then two weeks, and I went for my uh, two-week follow-up with the infectious disease guy. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's better, but we're still probably going to take off the end of your toe. And, uh, and he, of course, his information to me was, well, we'll look the, work with the antibiotics, but you've got to keep it in the back of your mind. You're probably going to have to come back here and, and have this done. When this past week, he said, you know, it's, I'm really pleased with this. As soon as it finishes closing up, we'll take you off the antibiotics. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Glory. I mean, so we're not, we're not cutting anything off. Um, you know, the, um, I, I asked my, uh, I told you, I think I told you this, but I asked the, um, uh, the podiatrist last week, that, a week ago, that when I saw him, I said, so what do you think? Tell me, at the hospital, what did you think? He said, you know, he said, my, my gut feeling and my experience is you weren't going to keep your toe. He said, most of the time, it doesn't happen. He said, but most people ain't you. Because hey, I've told them all along, I said, I'll keep my toe. I said, you guys do your work. I am believing God. I've, told, I've had been no, made no bones about it. We're believing God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, now it's almost, it's getting really close to actually coming together, the, all the tissue growing back from the inside out because it was completely gone in there. I had a big hole. You could stick my, probably stick my finger down in a hole all the way up to the bone. It had split open, and then there was a, there was a cave inside the crevice. It, it, I mean, you look at it, you kind of go, I mean, you know, you kind of look at it, you're like, uh, you got to have a strong stomach. I got pictures. Janie's taking, taking pictures of this thing from the beginning. We, we, could, we could get a Shutterfly book. <laughs> about faith, but my journey with faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the hospital was nasty ugly. I mean, nasty ugly. The, um, the picture when, when, when they kind of, they went in and started debriding a little bit, and it, when it just opened up. And you just you see this hole in your toe. I mean, it's, it's you know, and it's all the way down to the bone. 
And you're just kind of, and all that has to grow back. All that tissue, all that muscle, all that tendon has to regrow and regenerate. It's a miracle. Because it was eaten though the infection had just destroyed it. That necrotic tissue, that black tissue with the, t- the skin just died. I mean, you know, it was black and hard. I mean, it's, it, all that had happened. And, of course, I look at the picture and go back, you know, I can probably see why he thought he was going to cut my toe off. <laughs> but, but, but God, hallelujah, my toe's regenerated. I'm healed. I'm whole from the top of the head to the toes to the tip of my toes. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, we, we keep looking at it going, it's getting, I mean, it's just that, that little that opening is just getting smaller and, and, clem- and it's, the tissue's all growing back from underneath, from outside, it's all growing. It's, it's growing from all kinds of directions to close up because it was a big opening up on my toes, just, you know, nothing there, but nothing there. <laughs> Regrowing. So, um, and uh, of course, the, um, the podiatrist said, you know, it's, it, uh, you won't be seeing you much longer, you know. Yeah, that's right, as you come to church. So, but, you know, we just, we're just giving testimony, as, as progress reports. Yeah, I'm still in this boot because it's better not to have it in a sweaty shoe where your feet sweat and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we just don't want to have that. We, we keep all kinds of wound care on it, that kind of stuff. We're doing real diligent, but I'm telling you, this is God. Amen. I have regenerated tissue, new tissue, amen, you know, and when I look at it, and I thought, Mom, and I've heard stories, I know I'm, I'm testifying, I can't wait to be able to test. I'm going to probably come in one Sunday and take my foot of shoe off, <laughs> that you, I mean, we'll put the picture up on here of what it did look like and let you see it in real life, yeah, <laughs> like a baby foot, or we just might put pictures up on the screen and let you see the pictures I have to take the, foot, the shoe off, but I'm telling you. This has been a faith journey, and I've heard, I've heard horror stories of people having to go through wound care treatment and everything like this for over a year to get the tissue to grow back and to, and to heal. This is supernatural. In the January, it will be three months, and we're almost closed up. And they're, they're ready. As soon as it does, they're ready to take me off the antibiotics and everything because it won't need them anymore. And, and the antibiotics are really just to make sure infection doesn't get in it now. Not because I have infection. They're just preventing any infection from getting in there while it's closing up healing, you know. So, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. This is a, just a, a journey of faith. Yeah. Brother Bill's got one, too. Right, let's have a... So you wouldn't get to do this, what you're doing right now. I wouldn't be able to close my hand. We're going to close your hand. Because of all the scar tissue that is formed. Because my, my head had to remain immobile for so long. And if you don't move your muscles for so long, it, it actually kind of forms a, like a bony structure almost of scar tissue. And so I've been going to physical therapy, which is no fun, because he gets in there and crushes his fingers. <laughs> But uh, I, I got down where I can touch my fingers. <laughs> so you could, you're not supposed to go do this. I'm not supposed to do it, and and he basically said, "There's not a lot we can do. You just have to live with it, kind of." But he said, "Keep working it," and I've been working it. Just uh, better, better. So I'm, I'm gonna have full use of my hands. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God's good. We preached this for years. There's just going to be times in life you're going to have to do it, not just believe it. You have to. Do, I mean, not not just a, 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 um, acknowledge that you think that's true. We have to be able to do it. Amen. And when that when that listen, when the storms of life come, you got to be able to do it. We're doing it. Amen. All right, brother Joe. Uh, brother Joe cut his finger up. Nurse told me back up and told me that I lifted my finger. I told her, but she told me again I would. I told her, I said, when it grows back, I'll come back and show you. Did you go back yet? No, sir, but it's almost back. 
Okay. Amen. Right. 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 Thanking God ever with hope. Amen. 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 All right. That's what we're supposed to do. That's right. So here we are. <laughs> then I, I, I unleashed attack against everybody, and look what's happening. We're winning. We turn the, we're turning the devil back at every turn. Glory to God. About what the doctor said, nurses say, and all that sort of I ran into some nurses at the hospital that worked. That good to you, you know. But the vast majority at Highpoint Regional were very nice, very kind, and they heard me playing teaching tapes, and heard me confessing the word, and they, they would listen to Brother Hagen preach, and this uh, several verses came in and said, Who's that preaching? Oh, it's Kevin Hagen. Oh, I love his teaching. And she said, I've agreed with you that you're healed. Awesome. Uh, so, I mean, there are people out there in medical professions that will agree with you. But don't let their disagreement work on you. Our orneriness. They <laughs> <laughs> get ornery. Yeah, I ran into ornery more than that one day. <laughs> Got up in the middle of the night from go for a walk. Uh, opened the door. And there's an older nurse standing there. And she says, what do you need? <laughs> I said, I'm going for a walk. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Did somebody lick the sugar off your frosted wheats? <laughs> oh, my. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I, I, I got to come out of this coat. The sun shining on my back. It, it, whoever downtown decided to really make it nice and warm this morning. And um, we win. Brother Joe's got his finger. Brother Bill's alive. I got my toe. I'm sure we can all go through and start having the testimonies. Hallelujah. Of what God's done for us. Amen. But it's good to know that when... The enemy comes in like a flood. The Spirit of God raises up a standard against him. That our God, he is God, and there is none else. Can you say amen? amen. That we win, we're the head, not the tail above only and not beneath. Praise God. That greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Praise God. We thank God that because of faith in him, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. I said amen. The greater one lives in us. The greater one abides in us. Faith in his word gets answers and produces results, praise God. That when the world says it can't be done, God is the God of the I can, glory to God. Hallelujah. And not only is he a God of I can, he's a God of I will, praise God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 In our deepest, darkest hours, glory to God. When you've been told one thing, when you've been told you're going to die, when you've been told you're going to lose your finger, when you've been told you're going to lose your toe, and the devil's sitting up there going, you'll be a funny, you won't even want to go to the beach anymore and take off your shoes. Out there with no the big toe over there. Or if they cut off the dot, you know, the top knuckle, you're going to have this funky looking toe. You know? If they cut off the end, it's going to look deformed. The devil will just sit there and talk to you. But you know what? Jesus is Lord. He bore my sicknesses, carried my diseases. Hallelujah. By his stripes, I've been healed, praise God. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, moving down, you know, we began the year, and as we said, we began the year, the new year, and we come in with all these uh, ideas, and sometimes they're grandiose, and, and people say, what's your New Year's resolution, and all this kind of stuff. And people just kind of still drunk, so to speak. On turkey and, and pie and pecan pie and all the kind of stuff from Christmas and presents and, you know, decompressing after the, the craze of shopping before Christmas. Can I recommend something? Internet. <laughs> the UPS driver and the United States Postal Service get to go out and ride around with the crazies. Yep. You just sit in your house, wait for them to put it on your front porch. Yeah. It's a God idea. Yeah, they'll even wrap it for you. You're like, I went out one day, I, Nathan needed crickets. 
And the only place you get them was Pet Smart. You can't, you know. And so I went to Pet. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's New York City at rush hour in the parking lot. Me pulling out, right? I mean, just I just need crickets. You know? Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from thine enemies. Hallelujah. Save, O Lord, with a strong arm. I just, I want to live and not die. In the parking lot. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Amazon. Well, anyway, we, we come through all that. Then we, you know, we, all the shopping's done. You sit around the house, spend time with family. And then New Year's comes up, you know. New Year's Rockin' Eve, Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with whoever's hosting this year. I don't even watch that anymore. I don't run over to K Vegas and watch their ball drop. Kernersville has a ball drop. Yeah. That's what I said when I heard about it, too. Anyway, I don't get into all that. But, you know, we, as we traditionally are, are, are driven to have a New Year's resolution, have a new thing, new goals for the new year. You know what? Setting a goal for the new year without making changes won't cause it to happen. And so we started out last week talking about, um, and, and actually I think we did even on the 31st, your dreams, your vision, your possibility, your destiny. Because the things that will make our lives different, the things that will change and transform our lives is Walking with God. The council took note of the disciples of Jesus when they questioned them and interrogated them that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. They that turned the world upside down. I'm trying to. I'm sorry, Brother Bill. This thing is, it keeps riding down and flopping. They want me to try a different headset this morning because we want to make sure our, our frequency is not the issue with some of our recording. Hallelujah. But it just keeps plopping. It keeps doesn't fit my ear right. And that's, that's about these things. If you don't have it quite right, it'll just do weird stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it gets bad enough, I'm going to grab a handheld. Get me one with a cable on it and tie it and loop it into my belt. <laughs> so I can be a dog on a leash. That's what you said. I felt like a dog on a leash. Hallelujah. But if we don't have an understanding of how real change takes place. We can make all the New Year's resolutions we ever want to make. And they'll never, ever do anything. Hello? We have to have change. So we said two weeks ago, we said the desires of our heart. <clears throat> Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. <clears throat> and we spent that service talking along these lines. That the way we've interpreted, and I think maybe overly done, the way we've interpreted in our Word of Faith charismatic prosperity circles is that if I'll just delight in the Lord, whatever I, my heart wants, I can get. And that's kind of the approach we take at it. You know, whatever little whim comes up, I get it. When really, I'm sorry, guys. This is, I thought I had this thing right. Yeah, this is in the wrong place. Hallelujah. But really, we've talked, we spent time talking about the fact that spending time with God, he will interject or put desires in your heart. So the desires you now have by spending time with him become godly or God-birthed or God-breathed desires. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have a desire for certain things in life, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that. However, we, we need to... <laughs> Jesus, help me take the wheel. I'm sorry, guys. This is, this, is a, this is a little bit annoying. You know, we're trying to figure out a, a, a issue that we've been having over frequencies and um, this is designed to fit Brother Bill's ear. Isn't that right? Yep. We obviously don't have the same size ears or around our ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm just overcoming. You know, 
I mean, it's, it's, as I look over here, it's pointed down. Where was I? Anybody know where I was? Okay, so God gives us the desire. They're birthed out of intimacy with God. Now, now listen, I can tell you God will birth intimate desires in your heart that are things in life that you would like to have and want, but they'll be birthed out of him, out of your walk with him, a wife or a husband, you know, uh, prospering, those kind of things. But it won't be this self-centered, you know, I'm going to get rich quick overnight and then go tour the world for the rest of my life and the church will never see me again, I see the idea. I only have supernatural debt cancellation, so I don't have to do anything in life. And we try to disguise it with, i got to be blessed to be a blessing, except most of the time people aren't interested in really being a blessing. If you're not going to be a blessing where you are, you're not going to be a blessing when you get to other places. Money is a magnifier. You take all these athletes who become multimillionaires on the basketball court, and they end up many, many, many times bankrupt at the end of their careers. Because they did, you, you, you didn't take the poverty mindset out of the kid. You just let him elevate his lifestyle to live in that still poverty mindset. They go and spend everything they got all the time and never have anything. And then the agents walk away. And then they walk away from the game with nothing. They got movie actors, big name movie actors who made millions of dollars uh, uh, in their movies who are bankrupt. You can't, just because you get the money doesn't mean you're going to be successful. There has to be things in your heart. So God wants to produce desires in your heart that are godly, that are or orchestrated by him, that will lead you into blessing. He'll lead you into the land of milk and honey. He'll lead you in the land where there's plenty. He'll lead you in these places, but they'll be a, a, as a result of walking with him, being with him. So that's the first thing we talked about. Then last week we talked about um, how that your vision is the plan for your dreams. Amen? Write the vision. Make it plain that he may read that runs it. Though it tarry. We talked about the word tarry. The two different Hebrew words here in this passage for the word tarry. And one of them meant, though it looks like it's delaying. And I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit. But, you know, if you study that, that's just kind of what it is. Though it appear to be delayed, wait for it. Because it will not be in vain. That's what that second tarry means. It, what you're believing God for, what God has promised you, what God has said to you, will not end up being in vain. Okay? So this week, let's go, so, you know, spend time with God. Be intimate with God. Let, let God birth the vision in you. And then know, write it down. Believe God for it. You know, it's not going to be in vain. It may not look like it's coming to pass, but don't, chill. It won't be in vain. Your faith won't be in vain. I said your faith won't be in vain. Amen? Amen? Once you have a desire in your heart birth of God, once you are in faith and that it's not going to leave and it's not going to depart and it's not going to become in vain, once all those things are in operation, it's your possibility. You now live in the I can. I can do it. I can live there. I can walk there. I mean, I can be blessed there. Can you say amen? All right. Um, Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to the man, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, do you understand that Scripture has parameter or boundaries? Well, if I got, if I got enough faith, I could just fly like a bird. No, you can't. Not unless God gave you a supernatural manifestation or something so you can fly like Superman, you can't fly like a bird. Now that you've got a, a, a set of wings with a jet propulsion behind it and you are in, get into the laws of, uh, dyna, uh, of, of, of um, physics where you've got the law of thrust and lift overcoming gravity. Okay? You know, I, I, just, I find airplane, air flight interesting because as the wing goes, uh, as, as the engine's pushing the plane down the runway, air begins to go over the wings. And what's really happening is low pressure is forming over top of the wing and the wing lifts up into that low pressure. And that's what causes the plane to lift off the ground. And they keep that, as soon as you turn the engine off, you lose the thrust. There's no more air going over. You lose the low pressure system over the wing, and the wings start falling. That's why you got to have thrust, law of th left, thrust and lift. All right. I always, find, I just find that fascinating. Okay. But you know, we we don't unless you can really come up with some other way to get yourself really going. 
and get enough wingspan on you, you, you ain't going to fly like a bird. You're going to jump out of the barn and break your leg in all likelihood. All right? We, we come up with crazy things. You know, well, my faith going to do this. My faith going to do that. And we start saying stuff the Bible doesn't promise you. All right? I'm going to be a multimillionaire by the end of this year. God showed me I'm going to be a multi. Well, have you been tithing and giving? Nope. Can you believe for a McDonald's hamburger? No. Mark Brzee preached a sermon a number of years ago. He's got a tape series. He's probably still out there somewhere. Stretching your faith from socks to cars. People run out there and want to start, you know, it's, it's like you go in the gym. You ever been in the gym with people? Load up all that. Load up some 45s on there. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, three 45s on each side is, 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 a, is three, three 15 pounds, 315 pounds, you know? And you put a couple of 25s on each side, now you're at 365, all right? If you haven't been lifting weights, you're not lifting that. As a matter of fact, you may not even be able to get off the rack. And having your buddies lifted up, and then you going, boom, bouncing off your chest like this, and then pulling it back up is not benching 365. I see him do it. Get up and go, hey! And I'm like, you idiot. <laughs> Probably a good chance you do that again, you're going to break your, 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 your chest bone. All right? Now, where do you start? You, start, you might start with the bar. <laughs> but if you were working hard enough, and you add on slowly and keep working, you can get up at the 365 over time. A lot of people start out with their faith making these grandiose confessions, and they, don't, they can't get there because they had not done anything in the interim between. Okay? So, what does God do? Well, the Bible says this, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. New Testament says from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. We move up. Okay? So the dream that God gives you, the vision that God gives you, though it looks like it's tearing, you know, sometimes things have to happen in order for it to come to pass. There are just things that have to be orchestrated. There's that things that have to be set in motion that God's at work on. Now, we're sitting right here in this, you know, in a temporary an interim a meeting place. But you know what? God knew that was coming long before we did or long before I would even listen to him about getting out of where we were. And the two weeks we had to break down and get out of there is why I didn't want to move. Boy, that was a lot of work. Oh, my goodness. I can still see Nathan sitting on the ladder in the nursery with his head up in the ceiling, just sitting there. You could tell from his body postures, he was like this. <laughs> and I looked there and said, buddy, what's wrong? This wire, up, these wires up here are like a rat's nest. Well, 20 years of just pulling wire from the stage back and, and all and not really strapping it off like we should. It was an absolute jungle. Look like uh, electronic tumbleweed, all intertwined, all bought, knotted up, you know. So I had a plan. Okay, buddy, let's drop the let's just drop the whole thing right out here, and we'll just start taking one line at a time and, and and getting it out and stretching it down the hall, and you know, and it took a while. It took a while to get it all undone. We got it undone. See, sometimes some things have to be done to get where you're going. Amen. When I got born again, I told the story, but it fits here. For those who haven't ever heard it before or are watching and never heard it before. Um, when I first got saved, I knew. How do you know? Just like God. Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy, from thy father's house, from thy kindred. Go into a place that I'll show you. God shows us stuff. I knew I was going to the Orient to preach. Just knew. How did you know? I, I just knew. Now, what I didn't do was run out, buy an airline ticket to China or Asia or somewhere in Asia, Japan or Thailand or somewhere, and take off and go and say, I got to preach. 
As a matter of fact, I didn't do anything with it for years. Hello? It was always there. It was always there. And, uh, you know, I was 80, 79, 80. I got saved in uh, 79, went to Raymond 80, left in 81, came home, went to work in the church in Greenville, worked there for uh, over five years. Um, I think Jesse was born in 86, and in the spring of 87, we moved to Greensboro, late spring, and then started pastoring here in Greensboro. And um, had gone on one mission trip and all that time. We went to the Dominican, the church went down to the Dominican Republic. Okay, and, um, you know, oh, this is my first mission trip. Got sick as a dog. Man of faith and power. Yeah, they changed my, changed my business card from the man of faith and power to the man of paste and powder. I'm just telling you, it was terrible. Ate this hamburger, and I'm going to tell you, at the Hotel Cervantes, all right, in Santa, in Santa Domingo, Bar, uh, Dominican Republic. And, and, one of the, and one of the ministers there you know, that traveled a lot said, now, it's not going to taste like American beef. They don't top it out with grain like we do. So I was going to give it a chance. My first bite, it tasted like the city dump smells. <laughs> but I'm faith man. I'm, I'm, going to be a, I'm not going to be an American missionary. I'm going to be like the people. I took the second bite. And I just had to push it away. I could, I'd be like, I can't, I can't do this. Well, then we drove from Santo Domingo to uh, Barona in a Nissan minivan with nine people in it at 100 and some degrees outside with uh, Brother Beatty rolling the window down, throwing Spanish tracks out from T.L. Osborne to the people on the side of the road. <laughs> and, you know, and whoof, and my legs were up on top of the, in the engine was when it came inside. I'm sick as a dog. I'm turning purple. Forget green, I went to purple. And uh, Pastor Zabowski said to his father, I said, hey, Dad, you know, uh, every time you roll that window, you're letting all that hot air in here. Yeah, John, I thought about that, but it's a whole lot hotter where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember they're going, oh, oh, oh. first mission trip. So for three days, we went. We stopped on the way over there at some place where, where an orphanage was, and, and one of the people went to the bathroom, came out and said, if you, want, if you want to eat, don't go to the bathroom because they went through the prep area for the food. There were flies landing all over the chicken where they were cutting it up and getting it ready. I learned to say, a rose con habituelas, rice and beans. Why? They've got to be boiled Forever to cook. <laughs> See, everywhere I went, what do you want to eat? A rose con habituelas. For days, it was a rose con habituelas. Well, then, I'm, I'm not, you know, I wasn't going to go down there and drink a bunch of soft drinks or whatever. Then I, I'm at the, uh, one of the restaurants, and I want club soda. You know, I'm going to be good. You know, and get this club soda, which is carbonated water. Take a swig, look in it, and stuff is floating all in it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I asked the waiter, I said, uh, how do you say 7-Up in Spanish? He said, un 7-Up. <laughs> At least an American bottling company, they, they, they required to do it to American Standard Club. So it was just some Dominican bottle thing that probably didn't have the water bottle washed good or whatever. My first mission trip was a, was a sight. You know, I wasn't sure if I was going to go do mission trips after that again or not. But then later, when we came to Greensboro, Mark Mazee came, and then the Lord spoke to us. And, you know, I'm, I'm telling a story that goes along with uh, getting out of here on time. <laughs> Sunday. But, you know, we, we, uh, we had heard of Mark Brzee. You know, Brother Hagan had talked about him and Doug Jones and his services, you know, and told the stories about them and stuff because uh, Doug lived with Brother Hagan, and, and Tony was one of, those, this, one of those people that just really connected with the ministry at, at young age and was, was connected to him sincerely and deeply. And um, 
Uh, but but uh, Mark, and then, of course, my, I said, and Mark was saying, Mark, and Mark um, had come to our church, and um, we had had a relationship. He came four or five times back in those days, and um, we, we just, you know, their, their ministry it took a turn to pastoring and not traveling as much, and so, you know, we don't get to see them often. We still love them. We think that you know, there's a wonderful blessing to the body of Christ. And, um, but he started Bible schools in Europe. The Lord spoke to him and gave him a vision to start Bible schools in Europe to go uh, uh, with a three to five year window at each school, probably, and to train up ministers in these countries. And because he had been going into Germany, he brought East German pastors to win a Bible seminar before the Iron Curtain fell. And they had gotten the authority of the believer translated into Germany and got it to those pastors. And they were, they were going and having services. I mean, services like this. This was before the Iron Curtain fell. It was right on the precipice of it that was happening. Go in there and have a service. And ask anybody who wanted to get saved to please stand up. And everybody in the room, 1,500 people would stand up. And they would turn to the interpreter and say, no, no, no. They don't understand. Please sit down. If you've never accepted Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord, if you've never come to Christ, please stand up. And everybody stand up. Now, you don't understand. Please sit down. And after about the third or fourth time, the interpreter says, they've never been saved. 1,500 people, everybody in the room. Well, you know, then, then God gave him a vision for the Bible schools. And so... Uh, at camp meeting, the Lord spoke to me and said, you'll travel in Europe uh, with the disease, and ended up, he talked to me the next day, and there's more to the story, but it's not relevant here, and, and talked to me, stopped me and talked to me and said, I'm opening Bible schools in Europe, and we want you to go and minister in that. And I'd already had the answer from the Lord before I ever knew about it. Then God, don't have to ask, don't even have to pray. God's already told me to go. I knew about it before. Not, not exactly what you were doing, but the Lord told me something. So I don't even have to pray about it. When we did that, we went, we went all over uh, Estonia, Czech Republic, Sweden, um, England, uh, Spain, France, Italy, all over there, you know, preaching in the Bible schools. And just, you know, I've been to Estonia four times. And I kind of say, something, I've got to go back. And my heart burns to go back. I just, you know, we're just going to have to believe God to get, you know, for the money to come in so we can go because I've got to go. There's something just burns in me. I'm, I am well known in Estonia. I get greetings when the Catholics will say, well, so-and-so said, sent their greetings to you, tell you hi, um, because we, we impacted them, and we, we have a relationship with them. And it's been years. It's been a long time. I need to go back. And um, it'll cost, it'll cost two, three, four thousand, two, three, two or three thousand dollars to go, you know, to get over there and to do it. Um, but I have to go. I have to. And um, so anyway, you know, after all that, um, remember God told me I was going to the Orient. I'm going to Western Europe. We had gone to the islands, but I hadn't gone, to, I hadn't gone west. Okay? I hadn't gone west. I'm still going east. And I uh, got Martin Brzee's newsletter one day, about 90, about 96 or 7, somewhere in there. And uh, in there he said he was flying Flying in a plane, you know, they, they were flying back and forth to Europe all the time. And uh, he said, and he looked out the window, and um, I forgot what, what, why they were going. Maybe they were coming east, uh, going west, east from Europe for some reason, for a, for a purpose or something. Didn't really know what they were. I don't remember exactly what was going on, what he was doing. But he looked out the window, and, and I think he had the air magazine in there and, he, and pictures, you know, of all the uh, countries and stuff. Where they talk about where they fly and that kind of stuff. And the Lord spoke to him and said, what, you, what, what you've done in Europe We'll work in the Orient. And then he announced he was going to start Bible schools in, 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 in Asia. And when I read that, I heard this just flew up out of my spirit. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the answer to what I told you when you first got saved. And so I'll never forget. I mean, you know, just... When the word of the Lord comes to pass, you're walking by faith, you're doing, you're walking all these things out. But in 19, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember if it was 96 or 97, I think 1997, 96, I have to go back and look at my passport to remember the exact dates. I stepped off that airplane, 747. Onto the tar they didn't, they didn't, they didn't run you up to the, the gate. They just put you on the tarmac and bust you over. I stepped off the airplane in Bangkok, Thailand. 
And, and, and you're, you're just tears welling up in your eyes thinking, God said it. I didn't do anything to try to make it happen. I just walked with him. I followed him. I went with him. And here I stand in the fulfillment of a word given to me 25 years ago. No, no, not 25 years ago. It was 99. That's what it was because it was 20 years. 79, he spoke it to me. 99, it came to pass. It was 20 years. That's what it was. Now, I know that's, that's how I remember it was, the, it was 99. I'm standing here in the fulfillment of the word of the Lord that took 20 years to come to pass. But it came to pass. I said it came to pass just like he said it would. Are you here? You're going home. See, any time in that period in between, I could have gone, I just, you know, I was zealous and, and, and excited and just thought I heard something and it won't God. And actually, I put it on the back burner. I hadn't even really thought about going to the Orient until I picked up that magazine that day and I saw that and the Spirit of God went quick and there it is. There it is. Abraham started thinking there was nothing going to happen with, you know, having his seed. Went in with the Hagar. But then before that, the Lord came, and this is it. And there are things in our hearts and visions and things that we know that we know that we know God gave us years ago. And you've let it slip or you think it's not ever going to happen. And I'm a witness and a testimony. And I can tell you. I can tell you, don't let go of the dream that God gave you because in due season we will reap if we faint not. Amen. And as I stood on that tarmac and I'm just, you know, tears are welling up in the, in the realization that I am standing in fulfilled prophecy. The word of the Lord is sure. The word of the Lord is steadfast. The word of the Lord is true. And I didn't make it happen. I didn't manipulate it to make it happen. All along the way, I kept getting direction or instruction from the Lord. Mark Brzee came to our church because he was down in another church in Ashboro with a pastor who had him come in. He, only went to have, he would only have him on Sundays. He didn't do extra services. He did Sunday morning, Sunday night. He said, well, I got him coming into my church. He wants to know if he can do another church area, so he didn't have to come in for one church and didn't know if you were interested. I didn't, I mean, before I was, I mean, I, I didn't have time to think. I'm like, yeah, we'll have him. Yeah. Didn't have time to get out of my mind, my brain to hook up with it. We'll take a Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Really? Yeah. All right. And I'll never forget, he came to me and he said, as we, we, as we, after our meeting and stuff, he, he said, you know, he said, you know, we, we were, had it in the heart to come here. He said, the other place was good. He said, but. We were supposed to be here. We had some powerful meetings. Back before he was doing Holy Ghost meetings, we were having Holy Ghost, had Holy Ghost meetings. Strong, powerful meetings. And uh, after about the fourth or fifth time he came, he said, no, I keep a journal everywhere I go. And he kept having in there like Holy Ghost meetings for our church. He got back, and last time we were here, we had this kind of meeting. And before that, it was this kind of meeting. And there were Holy Ghost meetings. And so a connection was made supernaturally. I didn't even pursue him. I didn't pursue their ministry. Y'all hear you gone home. I said, you hear you gone home. God knew in 79 when he told me where I was going that in 87, 1987, Mark was coming to our church. And there was a connection going to be made that in 1991 or two, whichever it was, I was going to Europe in association with his ministry. That that would open the door to what he would tell Mark in 97 or 98, whatever it was, and I would end up walking in the fulfilling of the word from 79, and he was orchestrating stuff all along the way that I couldn't put together. You ever had those math problems? They got a graph. They give you a bunch of uh, coordinates, you know, solve for X and then graph it. You know, and you keep doing it, you keep doing it, you keep doing it. And while you're doing it, you can't see what you got. 
You just draw, you're just connecting the lines of the points on the graph. And then when you get done, uh, you got a Santa hat at Christmas. Okay? While you're doing it, you can't see anything but a bunch of dots and lines. All of a sudden, you put the last one together. Look. Wow! And over here, all you got is a bunch of uh, 3x plus 7 minus 2x plus 3 equals, you know, solve it. You know, actually, they don't say equal. They just have that up there. You got you to create the equation to solve it. Right? You create the point to graph. And God's graphing your life with the I cans and the possibilities. That as you keep walking here with point to point, you're going to step back one day and see the whole picture and go, there it is. I didn't see it coming. Okay? I didn't see it coming until the last point was put in, the last mark was made. And then, boom, there it is. The full picture is now there. You're getting glimpses along the way, but you still hadn't seen it. And you point and grab that last point and connect it. God's working in you that way. His dream, his vision is now your possibility. It's the I can of your life. Can you say amen? Philippians 4.13, I can do all, 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The waiting game is never fun. Except in the kingdom, the waiting game is not sitting in Tulsa, hello, doing nothing, waiting on your ministry. You keep moving with God. And how God's moving you, and, what, and, and it may not look like it makes any sense why you're moving to this point, and then back up to that point, and then over to this point, and then over to this point, and over to that point, and back over here in this point, and that, you know, and except when the last one's connected, you got the picture. Amen. And now the whole thing, it makes sense why you went here, 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 here. But that's all in retrospect. You didn't, couldn't see it going. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Abraham left on the word of the Lord not knowing where he went. And he went from point to 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 point until God brought him into the land he, he was showing. Can somebody say amen? 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 Hallelujah. So now the vision, the dream that you've got from intimacy with God, that you've written down that's going, what's going to happen, is now your possibility to live in it. Can you say amen? It becomes, <laughs> uh, glory to God. Somebody say Shanda. It becomes your destiny. It becomes the, I know my thoughts I have towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not evil, to give you an expected end or a hope in a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Psalm 33, 11. Listen, folks. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. What does it mean? What God said, God's going to do. That's where he's leading you. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It might not. Joseph, we talk about Joseph. The things that happened, the points that it did not make any sense, but he preserved the nation. He could not see in, in Potiphar's house and in the jail and all these things how he would be the one that would save the remnant of a nation. That God's word and oath that in the seed of the woman shall bruise the, seed of the, shall bruise the head of the serpent would be saved and, 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 and protected and brought to pass. He couldn't see that picture. Are you here? Have you gone home? Are you here? Have you gone home? God preserved a lineage with a path you couldn't see until, what did Joseph say in the end? Now I know the Lord sent me. He didn't know that before. There was bitterness in his heart, whatever in his heart. Until his brother showed up, and then he was really ticked. 
Hello? I mean, he was not a happy man to see him. You know, here you go. Here. Can't see it. That's why we have to live by faith. Like the old prophets in the Old Testament, people looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Having died in faith, not receiving the promise that they without us could not be made perfect. Everybody see, Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. Oh, yeah, he did. He stood in the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. He just didn't go in the way he thought he was going in. Hallelujah. Okay, can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. There are things that have seemed forted in your life. There are, and I, and I, I encourage you, pick those things back up. Don't come to Faith and Victor Church just because it's the place we go. Come with vision. Come with, with, with zeal. Come with fervor that we have a mission and a calling from God to reach the city and to reach the state and to reach the world with the gospel. That we're, that we're going to walk once again in the fullness of the plans of God. That this hiccup in the path of, of losing our, uh, the place that we were meeting. Uh, and, you know, listen, there, there was just issues there with the, with the owner. We, we, we couldn't deal with it. He didn't want us there, you know. And, was, you know, we just couldn't afford what he was trying to move it to. You know, the price, you know, I tell people what we were paying in the lease, and they're like, what? you got to be kidding. And, uh, you know, it, it came time to be out of there. But, you see, we're sojourning in a strange land right now until he brings us into our promise. And we keep looking at stuff, and things keep popping up, and you keep going, well, you know what? But God's leading us. We're going to keep walking with God. We're not going to lose vision. We're not going to lose hope. We're not going to keep going through the, you know, just go, oh. Uh, uh. Do I like getting up every, every Sunday morning and loading the minivan with all the equipment? No. <laughs> Honestly, it's not joy to go out there and throw all that equipment in the back of the van, then bring it over here, unload it all, then load it back up, take it back home, unload it all back into the closet. You know, but you know what? On the other hand, we're like, you know what? We got a place to meet. We're, we're together as a family. We've got equipment. High end, actually, when we get a new permanent location, that's going to be what we use. It's just too stinking cool. We're not going to have to have an audio room. We might have a, a video room or something where somebody can sit in and run the projections and stuff, but the audio person can sit out in the middle of the sanctuary. With a little tablet and go, well, oh, that's too loud over here. We'll fix that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not loud enough over here. You know. This is just really cool stuff. I think it's really cool stuff. Better than what we had. We had good stuff. Still have it, just in storage. Amen. But God gave us a word. He said, God gave us a word. And the counsel of the Lord is to all generations. And what looks like it hadn't happened, and people can leave, and people can question, and people can say, well, if they were really hearing from God, they would have done such and such. I really don't care about your opinion. I really don't. Well, look at this church. They came in and did blah, 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 blah. Yep. Someone went da, 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 and then I, pfft. Hello? I'm not interested. I don't really care what your opinion is. I know what God said. So I walk with God. Go with God. And then what God said, it will happen. I know. I've, been, I've lived it. I said I've lived it. Are you here? I've lived it. I've walked in it. I've stood in the fulfillment of prophecy that didn't happen next week. Oh, how we love next week. Are y'all here? We love what we said when the Lord gives us a word today and we got it tomorrow. And I'm going to tell a lot of people, a lot of times you say you gave in this offering and you walked out the door and got a return, you didn't get a return on that offering. That's probably from something before. You probably got a harvest just happened to be on the same day as you plant more seed. 
But we think, oh, that was a suddenly. That may have been from seed three years ago. There's no law against planting and harvesting on the same day different crops. Hello? It's, we, like, we like the other way. It sounds cool. It's a good testimony. Everybody gets excited and gets bigger. And we rob people of the... I was listening to Dad teach on... on I know. I know. We got to receive communion and break down. Okay. Listen to Dad teach on, commun, uh, on, um, on faith, on healing. And he said that... Um, um, I think Dowie, John Alexander Dowie said this. He said, instant healings can sometimes be a curse to us because people don't have to use their faith. They just have a manifestation of the Spirit, and then if it comes back, they don't have, they don't have any faith to use to stop it because they didn't get faith involved. But having faith, being progressively healed, Make sure you use your faith. You're building your faith. You're working your faith. And not that God, God loves people. He'll, he'll do all kinds of stuff for people. But we, we need to understand, you can't always be looking for the suddenly and the quick and the, and the instant, instant mashed potatoes. And how, many, how many use instant mashed potatoes? I use them. How many know there ain't nothing like taking an old tater and, and peeling it, boiling it, mashing it up, Pouring some cream in there and some butter and some salt and pepper from scratch. I mean, and you got some hearty, tasty potatoes. Instant. Sometimes sour cream. Nathan put some cheese in his other day and some, and some Olive Garden dressing to make garlic mashed potatoes. Apparently, they were, from what I heard, they were good. Cap says they were good. <laughs> I didn't get none. Huh? Let's all stand up. Amen. I'm going to read you one last section of Scripture, and then we're going to see the Lord's table. Isaiah 46, 10 and 11. Declaring the end from the beginning. Uh, let me, actually, let me read the verse before that. Um, remember the uh, 46, 9, 10 and 11. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. Remember the former things of old. Remember what God has spoken to you. I am God, and there's none like me. Listen to what God says. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. God's going to do it. Don't quit. Don't throw up your hands. Don't give in. Keep going. Can you say amen? Amen. If we can make it available for the ushers to get between you and the uh, aisles. or Can y'all reach them from where they're sitting without having to? Okay. We'll call youth over or children's church, whoever's over there. Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corneth. And remember, this, this part of this was a reproof of how they were conducting themselves at the Lord's table. Glory to God. First Corinthians twelve twenty two. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in or despise you the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a lot of people who quote, quote, quote Paul's grace statements now who would not like him if he was in the church today. He would still preach grace, and he would preach straighten up, you jerk. He wouldn't use that language. Have you ever read of Phillips? Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. I received of the Lord the same night, and with I also delivered to you the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and he had given thanks, he said, and break it, he said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it, not in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bed, bread, 
and drink this cup, you do share the Lord's death till he come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the precious broken body of the Lord that he bore our sickness and carried our diseases and made us every whit whole through the stripes on his back. In Jesus' name, let us eat together the body of the Lord. Thank you for your precious, precious blood whereby we've been redeemed, made nigh unto the Father, brought into the family, made one with you. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for spilling your blood, ratifying and sealing our covenant as an everlasting covenant with our God. In Jesus' name, let us drink together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go your way remembering this, that your dream, your vision, your possibility is your destiny. What God placed in your heart, he intends to bring to pass in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Glory to God. Greet someone. Tell them you love them. Remember this, all of our friends out here on Facebook Live. Remember this, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you next time.